Raise your hand if you love some cocoa. All right. March 13, 2004, Corey Coco Golf was born. And before grabbing up a tennis racket following inspiration from the Williams sisters, she was only several ounces babbling, mumbling baby capable of grabbing only a single finger. Here's the story of the newest wonder kid on the block, Coco Goff, who in 2020 became the youngest player to be ranked in the top 100 by the Women Tennis Association, or WTA. Coco was born in Delray Beach, Florida to African-American parents who had been athletes themselves. Her father, Corey Goff, whose first name is pronounced as his daughter's, was once a basketball player in college, playing for the Georgia State University team until he became a healthcare executive, but only for a little while as he had to quit to be a full-time head coach to his daughter, a daughter that he had wanted to follow in his footsteps of shooting hoops. On the other hand, Coco's mother, Candy Odom, after failing to make it as a gymnast due to her parents' disapproval, had been a hept athlete and hurdler also as a collegiate at Florida State University. She had won the Sun Sentinels Track Athlete of the Year for Palm Beach County two years in a row, which gave her an entry onto the Florida State team. After graduation, she had gone to work as an educator and her experience is what she's currently using now to homeschool Coco. Her biggest fans have to be her parents who make the best supportive moves up in the stance of all her games as they fist bump the air, clap and cheer. And when her two younger brothers, Cody and Cameron, grow up, they would very likely be Coco's cheerleaders themselves. <laughs> Commenting on this, Coco had told Gail King on CBS this morning that, In the match, I try not to look at my parents too much, but definitely when I have a big come on or I scream, I look at them because they kind of hype me up. And then sometimes when I feel a little bit tight during a match, I look at them because they just give me fist pumps, so that just shows me that everything's going to be okay. They're definitely my biggest supporters. I find that really lovely and I can't wait to see how this all started how she chose tennis and became so good at it. Early life, choosing basketball. So with two former athletes for parents, Coco had been introduced to sport at a very early age. Her father wanted her and his other kids to play basketball too, but as he now recalls, his hoop dream soon became a racket dream for Coco, who had become so intrigued and inspired to play the game of tennis at the age of four when she watched Serena Williams win the 2009 Australian Open on television. All of this had started in Atlanta, and she started playing tennis at the age of six. She had taken an even keener interest in tennis because it was an individual sport. Confirming this, she had said once, I wasn't much of a team person. I love tennis. I was so-so about it in the beginning because when I was younger, I didn't want to practice at all. I just wanted to play with my friends. When I turned eight, that was when I played Little Mo, and after that, I decided to do that for the rest of my life. Things really kicked off for her at the age of eight after the Goffs had moved to Delray Beach to live with her maternal grandparents for a little while. They finally got their apartment and started her tennis training fully. It was during this time her interest in the game became even stronger after she won the Little Mo 8 and Under Nationals. But because her father was once an athlete in a totally different sport, it was a little hard for him to train Coco at the beginning. So she was initially trained by Gerard Loglo at the New Generation Tennis Academy before her parents gave up their career to focus fully on their daughter. Her father became her head coach and her mother taught her at home. However, at age 10, a longtime coach of Serena Williams, Patrick Moratoglo, who ran Moratoglo Academy in France, helped sponsor Goff through his foundation that helps kids who cannot afford top-level training benefits substantially. Patrick recalling the first time he met Coco had this to say about her. I'll always remember the first time I saw Coco. She came over to the Moratoglo Academy in 2014 to try out, and she impressed me with her determination, athleticism, and fighting spirit. When she looks at you and tells you she will be number one, you can only believe it. And indeed, she proved it like a champ would, by becoming the youngest player at age 10 in the history of the tournament to win USTA Clay Court National 12 and under title. Junior Career at the age of 13, Coco started directly at the highest level grade A in grade 1 tournaments as she began playing on the ITF junior circuit. She showed a lot of promise in the grade 1 Prince George's County Junior Tennis Championships in Maryland, finishing runner-up to Jamie Forley at her third career event. Then the big one came. Will she make it to a Grand Slam tournament or will she not? Well, you guessed it. At only 13, she became the youngest girl single finalist after making her Grand Slam debut in the 2017 U.S. Open Tournament. And get this, this little kid cruised to the final with so much class and without losing or dropping a set. 
Then her relentless spirit and drive finally paid off after she clocked 14 years and took the junior tennis world by storm after winning the girls final of the French Open in 2018. Again, she didn't drop a single set and even managed to come from behind the thrash Katie McNally in three sets. After her success, she became the fifth youngest player to get the French Open title in the history of the tournament. One of tennis greats, Andy Murray, said this of her after her win. Her talent, I'd say, is off the charts for her age. There's not a lot of people I can name in the past that have come up like her, besides the Williams sisters. If people, if they know tennis, are familiar with Martina Hingis, that's the coolest thing I can come up with. But she's definitely one of a kind, and I can see in these two or three years, give her time, and she's going to be just as good. McNally after this win must have been heartbroken for sure, but a month later she was given a chance to redeem herself against Coco at the Grade 1 Junior International Roehampton. But boom, Coco beat her yet again and Coco earned herself the number one junior in the whole world. Even with this victory over McNally, there was never bad blood between both youngsters, as they had both gone on to win their final Grand Slam titles by sharing the same part of the court in the 2018 US Open giving Coco her first Junior Grand Slam title. Then in September of that same year, she became part of the face of her country alongside Alexa Noel and Connie Ma to represent the United States. They cruised to the finals and faced Ukraine, and they won. She later went on to win a singles title at the Orange Ball and ended the season as the number two junior in the world just behind Clara Burrell. Then suddenly her junior career was over. But do not be sad, folks. This is not a bad, but a good thing. She had just started another monumental journey, becoming a full professional tennis player, which means she could now write under any column that has occupation, tennis player boldly and with pride. Her first professional game was a qualifying one at the ITF Women's Circuit, which she won, of course. After struggling a little at the beginning of her professional career, she made a huge stride by becoming the youngest player at 15 years, three months to reach the main draw by qualifying in the open era. Then, she did the unexpected in the Wimbledon draw debut, beating world number 44 Venus Williams in straight sets. She continued winning until she faced Simona and lost to her in the fourth round of the tournament. Later that year, Coco and McNally reunited again to win their first career Women Tennis Association or WTA title. It's been such a steady rise for the youngster. She had said long ago that she wants to be the greatest player of all time and by the looks of things, she is definitely right on track. When asked if she still believed she would make it, she said, I will say definitely. I'm always the type of person who's never satisfied. I always want to be better and be hungry. When I win a tournament, I'm already looking forward to the next. But sometimes, I try to take a step back and really enjoy the things I've accomplished. Now starting a new year, she declared that one of her New Year's resolutions will be to cut down on her time on TikTok, journal more, and create more mental images of positive outcomes. Way to go, Coco.